Today, I'll be discussing our paper towards efficient serialization with NIC scatter gather. This is joint work with my advisors, Phil Levis and Matei Zahari at Stanford and Irene Zhang at Microsoft Research. Serialization turns scattered data structures into a contiguous format for transmission over the network. As shown in this bar plot, data center applications today can achieve single digit microsecond packet round trip times. The time to serialize and deserialize a very simple data structure with a single string field that's 1024 bytes large takes about 619 nanoseconds with Captain Proto. Overlaid on this graph as the dashed line, this is a small overhead in Linux, only 3.1%, but an entire 27% overhead in the case of ERPC, whose networking stack is highly optimized. Recent research has proposed hardware offloads for serialization to fix this problem from FPGAs or smart NICs. In this work, we ask, can we make serialization faster with existing hardware? And the answer is yes. Existing scatter gather capabilities in commodity NICs can be repurposed to accelerate serialization. In the rest of this talk, I will go over performance gaps in existing serialization stacks, our proposed approach, and why scattergather is a good fit, and technical open research challenges that arise with our approach. We ran a simple serialization echo server over a UDP DPDK stack. Concurrent clients send a serialized payload to the server who deserializes the payload, reserializes the same payload, and sends it back. We compare to Protobuf, Captain Proto, and Flat Buffers, three compilation based serialization libraries. We additionally compare to removing serialization and deserialization from the app and a zero copy UDP DPDK stack. This graph shows our results. Each point represents a set of concurrent clients, their achieved load, and their P99 latency. As the load is higher, eventually the server can't sustain the load, so the latency starts to shoot up a lot. This is the knee in each of these curves. The farther to the right the knee is, the higher load that the system can maintain. For protobuf, we notice that it spends a bunch of time ensuring that the payload is valid UTF-8 encoding. We replaced uh, we ran an additional benchmark, protobytes, that uses a bytes payload instead of a string to remove this overhead. We see that the software approaches only achieve up to about 52% of the UDP stack's peak single core zero copy throughput. We'll explore the reason for this performance gap in two, a serialization gap and a zero copy IO gap. First. CPU-based serialization is bottlenecked by data movement. Programmers like that data structures can be scattered in memory containing pointers. They like that they could modify this tree, adding or removing nodes without having to reallocate all of the memory contiguously. The job of the serialization library is to then move everything into a contiguous memory format to be able to send over the network. Consider a simple method schema with two string fields. These fields live somewhere in memory and the serialization library to serialize this would have to allocate space to hold the two fields, write in an object header to index the two fields and copy the two fields into the allocated space. We refer to this copy and allocation as data movement, something that no software serialization approach can avoid. Actual messages do coalesce values from different locations. The Redis mget command allows clients to send an array of keys and the server has to respond with the corresponding array of values. Here, v1, v3, and v5 are not contiguous. Now we'll go over the second zero copy IO gap. On send, Kernel bypass requires that packets live in special pinned pages so the OS can't reallocate or swap these pages. Serialization libraries aren't aware of this requirement, so their buffers just live in normal pages. 
then on send, the networking stack has to copy the buffer into a packet buffer with the packet header. On receive, the networking stack can't just give the application the received packet pointer directly. It has no way of knowing that the application will later free the packet when it might need to reclaim the memory so it doesn't run out of memory. The safest thing for the networking stack to then do is copy the buffer out into a separate buffer to give to the application. These memory ownership and management issues make zero copy IO difficult to reason about. So this causes an extra copy on send and receive for non-zero copy stacks. So how do we improve serialization? The core problem is that this application memory can be scattered all over the place. And the data movement required to get this memory in a contiguous fashion in pages that the NIC can work with takes a bunch of work. If we could somehow just get rid of this data movement, serialization would be more efficient. Fortunately, we have a hardware accelerator capable of coalescing non-contiguous IO regions, the NIC itself. The NIC has a scatter gather engine that allows us to give it pointers to the packet header, object header, and each of the serialization fields, which it'll coalesce into a single packet before transmission. We refer to this approach as scatter gather based serialization. The serialization library turns data structures into scatter gather arrays, which are lists of pointers and lengths that reference application memory directly. So scatter gather uh, serialization sounds great, like it can fix all of our performance problems. There are a bunch of design challenges remaining in designing a fully functional serialization library with scatter gather. Our paper has an in-depth discussion on each of these. So implementing better hardware support for scatter gather, understanding scatter gather's performance across NICs, and designing a serialization algorithm that adapts to different NICs, ensuring that application memory lives in these pinned pages so it's available for zero copy IO, and providing memory safety for general applications. Right now, we'll just focus on two of these issues. First, designing a serialization algorithm, so understanding how to turn data structures into scatter gather arrays, requires reasoning about scatter-gather's performance. We know that each scatter-gather entry requires the NIC to make another PCI request, and the associated PCI response comes back with a header. We also measure the performance of a one-copy echo server versus a zero-copy echo server and see that zero-copy is only worth it when the memory region is at least 512 bytes in size. This implies that using a separate scatter gather entry for zero copy transmission of a small buffer won't give performance benefits and could even hurt if the buffer is so small that the PCIe header is of comparable size. This means we can't just put every data structure field in a separate gather, scatter gather entry and we have to do something smart. Next, let's reason about memory safety. Our echo server app was simple enough to reason about memory safety manually, but for general apps, this gets complicated quickly. Consider the key value store client from before. For this response, the server constructs a scatter gather array, which it gives to the NIC. Because the actual send is asynchronous, in the meantime, the server could get a request to change one of the values. The server could either drop the pointer to the original value and update a new pointer in its place, or just write over the original value directly. In either case, the NIC's in trouble because for the previous request, it'll now send out incorrect or garbage data. This means that our serialization stack generally needs to protect against read-write races, as well as the application freeing a buffer while the NIC's still sending it. This is complicated by things like TCP retransmission, where the NIC might not even have the right value still when TCP needs to retransmit a packet. Our paper has a deeper discussion on the memory safety issues. In conclusion, zero copy serialization is possible with commodity hardware. Software serialization approaches are bottlenecked today by data movement, and we believe that NIC scatter gather can help fix this gap. 
Thanks, and these are some ways to contact me.